am waiting on somebody, so I thought I'd go ahead and film the seven weird things about me tag that Amy from Key Delicious Life tagged me in. I'm going to link her channel below so you guys can check her out if you haven't seen her. Um, I'm not going to post this, though, until I'm on my hike, so I'm not sure exactly what day you'll see this, but it's not going to be the same day that I'm filming it. Alrighty, some of these I had a hard time coming up with because with doing the 30, the vlogist with the random facts every day, some of them's going to be some you've already heard, so they're going to be a little recycled, but <laughs> you guys know me so well already. Alrighty, so let's get started. Okay, um, this one I've mentioned before, I am under 4 foot 11, um, a little over 4'10", so 4 foot 11, close to it, and at my heaviest, so I'm 58 and 3 quarters inches tall, and at my heaviest, I was 74 inches around my hips, so I was literally bigger around than I was tall, or than I am tall at one point. <laughs> Not anymore, thank goodness. <laughs> Thanks to Keto. Yo, it's Keto. <laughs> um, I gave you this one the other day. I had, I've had three sets of teeth. My baby teeth, a permanent set of teeth, and then those got pulled and another permanent set of teeth grew in their place. So three sets of teeth. Um, you guys know this one too. I was never able to have children of my own, so I took in other people's kids, whether they wanted me to or not. I would claim them as my own. Anytime I seen a child in distress until people got their situations taken care of, I would take their babies. <laughs> so, hey, got to keep them babies safe. Um, oh, I fell through the ice out at Salt Fork. I live close to Salt Fork State Park, and when I was younger, in my 20s, me and my sister would get together, and we'd walk out there. And in the winter, the lake would be frozen, and you could cut across the lake. So one day we walked out there, and we were cutting across the lake, and this dog tried to follow us. Well, our feet are bigger, so our weight is dispersed better across ice. A dog's feet are very pointy, and also all, he went through the ice, and uh, I went to go back out and get him, and I knew I would not make it out to him that I would fall through the ice before I could get there, but I figured as long as I could get to him and put him back up on the ice, we would be all right, and that's exactly what happened. I got 10 feet, within 10 feet of him, and fell through the ice, and broke the ice then with my elbow to get over to where he was at, put him up on the ice, and then I couldn't get back up on the ice myself. So I had to break the ice and keep moving forward. Thank goodness the water, like if I was sta at where I was standing at, if I just put my head up, I could stand, you know, I was touching bottom and like, so it's not like I was slipping under the ice. I was actually standing up and I just had to keep migrating forward until I got to where I was close enough to shore that I was able to actually step up onto the ice and it held my weight. But the walk home, my by the time I got back to my house, my clothes was actually frozen on my body, but I felt warm like it was a frozen shell and it had the heat trapped underneath of it. I did not feel cold. And everybody says it's because hypothermia was setting in. And that might have been. But I actually think it was because the outside of my clothes were frozen solid. And inside, like, it felt warm to me. Um, the bath to warm myself back up. Because I got in an... My dad filled the tub with cold water. I got in there... That felt like the hottest bath in the world. It felt like he had filled that tub with boiling water and he had ran nothing but cold into it. But even when I fell through the ice too, that felt like boiling water. That, you would think it's like a shock of cold. It's not. It feels like you're drunk. It instantly burns your skin. It feels like you're falling through hot water. It's a weird feeling to fall through ice. Anyway, <laughs> this is going to be long. I'm so sorry. Um... Of course, you all know that I love all animals, 
even reptiles. So at one point in my life, I had two iguanas, Iggy and Warner, and one snake, Samson. Um, you all know this too about me, <laughs> but it is a weird fact. I married my stepbrother. Uh, yeah, our parents started dating at the same time we started dating. They beat us to the altar. So they were married uh, a little, a few months before me and my husband got married. So at the time of our wedding, we were actually stepbrother and sister. But we, he actually proposed to me. We were planning on getting married before our parents ever got engaged. So our engagement was long. <laughs> um and my last one, I bought my first house at 18. The day I turned 18, I went house hunting. Um, but what's weird about that, not buying a house at 18, because I'm sure other people have bought their first homes at 18. What was weird about it is I started saving money to buy my first house when I was five years old. I had always planned on being a homeowner. I remember when I was five, my aunt come over to our house. Um, to borrow some money from my mom and I was sitting there just listening in on their conversation and she said that she didn't have her money for rent well when she left I asked my mom I said well what does rent mean and my mom's like well we own our home but Aunt Karen somebody else owns it so she pays them to live there and I remember telling my mom I'll never pay somebody else to live in their house. I'm going to always own my own home. She goes, well, you'll see uh, however the circumstances fall. But I was already getting an allowance at five years old. So I remember telling my sister, and we'd fill up Mountain Dew bottles with our uh, allowance money. And I remember telling my sister Brenda, when I turn 18, I'm going to buy us a house, and uh, you're going to come live with me. So when I turn 18, I'll take you and we'll go live, buy our own house. And that's exactly what we did. By the time I turned 18, I had enough money for a down payment for a home. So when we went looking, we found a house that suited both of us and hated it. <laughs> I had grown up out in the country. I didn't know, like, living in town, what that would be like. I assumed I would love to live in town. The thought of living in town just really appealed to me. And we're a small town. Um, but the thought of living in town was like, oh, I want to move to the city. I couldn't stand it. So it took me a year to pay the house off. Um, whenever I could, I made double, triple payments. So I had it under loan for a year. As soon as I paid that off, I sold it and brought the property beside my mom and dad and moved back out into the country and built the house that I'm living in now. But uh, no, I am not a town girl. I don't know what got into me. I think when you're 18, you just automatically assume you'd want to live the town. But no, I hated it. All righty, guys. There is my seven weird things about me. <laughs> eh, not too weird, but... I don't know. I don't have too weird of a life, I guess. <laughs> you guys have a great evening. And I'm not sure when I'll talk to you next. You'll see something tomorrow. <laughs> Blessings. I had to get back on here. I realized I forgot to tag anybody. <clears throat> so I am tagging Kimberly. Wow, Lindrica. You're it. <laughs> <laughs>